Hello, and welcome to an overview of how to register for the Provider Relief Fund Reporting Portal or PRF Reporting Portal. This video will demonstrate the process for registering, the first step in using the PRF Reporting Portal. For additional information, please refer to the PRF Portal Registration User Guide. Please note that you will only need to register once, as registration carries across all reporting periods. Before registering, you will need to have the following information readily available. 1. The tax identification number or TIN submitted during the application process. This can be accessed on the IRS Form W-9 or the business latest tax filing. 2. Provider Relief Fund or American Rescue Plan, also known as ARP Rural, payment information, including the TIN of the entity that received the payment. The TIN must be a TIN that received a PRF or ARP Rural payment as it will be validated during the registration process. The mode of payment, check or direct deposit via Automated Clearinghouse, ACH. 3. The exact payment amount. 4. Tins of subsidiaries, if a reporting entity reports on behalf of a subsidiary. From the HRSA homepage, you will see a welcome message and general registration guidance when you access the portal. Please note that the PRF reporting portal is best compatible with the most current versions of Edge, Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox web browsers. Towards the bottom of the screen is a resources section that provides links with information on Frequently Asked Questions, FAQs User Guides for Registration and Reporting The Reporting and Auditing Requirements And Portal Worksheets At the bottom of the page is important support contact information, including the hours of operation and language assistance. Please note that the hours of operation are subject to change. Throughout the registration process, a red error message that appears below the required data entry field indicates the field has not been completed correctly. Required fields are marked with a red asterisk at the beginning of the named field, and all required fields on a page must be answered in order to progress to the next page. Portal users should expect the registration process to take approximately 20 minutes and must be completed in a single session. It is not possible to save a partially completed registration. To begin, click the blue register button on the PRF reporting portal home screen. You will be brought to the registration terms and conditions page. After reading the terms and conditions, select the radio button to confirm that the terms and conditions are accepted and click next. This is the provider identity information screen where you will enter the following information. 9-digit TIN. All 9 digits of the TIN must be entered without any dashes or spaces. If your TIN begins with a zero, please include it. Check the accurate TIN checkbox. Business name as it appears on the W-9 form. Next. Enter your contact information for the remaining required fields. First name. Last name. Phone number. Mobile number. This field can also be used to verify your login as part of the 2FA process. Email. The email address must be valid and actively monitored for portal correspondence. All communications from the PRF portal will be sent to this address. Email can also be used to verify login as part of the 2FA process. Re-enter your email address. A username. Usernames can be the same as an email address, but a username must be unique to a TIN. A single email address can be associated with multiple TINs. Input for a username is not case sensitive. Finally, fill in the related address fields. 
street address. City. State. Zip code. When complete, click the next button. Next is the provider identity information, subsidiary information screen. Answer the will you report on behalf of subsidiaries that received a general distribution payment question by selecting yes or no from the drop down. If yes, then you will enter all subsidiary TINs on whose behalf you are reporting on the following screen. The system will not allow the provider to enter their own TIN as a subsidiary or parent of themselves. If no, you will continue with your registration. Additional information on general distribution can be accessed via the link in the sentence. Clicking here will open a new web browser tab. This will not affect your registration status, but could cause you to time out. Click next to continue the registration process. On the subsidiary payment information screen, you will need to provide payment information. Please note this information is used for identity verification only. You may enter either the TIN you are registering or, if the TIN has a subsidiary, one of its subsidiary's TINs. Payment information must be for the TIN entered in the TIN of entity that received payment field. The mode of payment will require if done by direct deposit automated clearing house. The settlement date, using the calendar widget or by typing in the date. And payment amount. Or if done by check, the check number and payment amount. Users must complete this page accurately to save the information and proceed with registration. When finished, click Next. The Profile Submission screen allows users to review the data entered for accuracy. You will see a warning at the top of the page that alerts you to certify all data before submitting. If all the information reviewed is correct, select Yes from the drop-down. You must answer, do you certify that the above information is accurate to the best of your knowledge question? Select yes from the drop down. If you select no, an error will display and you must use the previous button to go back and correct the inaccurate data. You must certify the accuracy of the information entered in order to successfully complete the registration. You must indicate if you are an entity employee or with a third party company. If you work for a third-party company, you must indicate you have written authorization to complete and submit reporting on the behalf of the entity. After answering the questions, users will be prompted to enter a username and password. Here, the username is pre-populated from what was entered in the username field on the provider identity information screen. Passwords must meet the requirements of a minimum of 15 characters, including three of the four character types uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special characters, and not be the same as the username or any part of the contact name, nor contain any variation of the word password. After a password has been entered, re-enter the password. It may be helpful to save the username, TIN, and password somewhere secure outside of the portal, as you will need this information to log in into the portal for reporting purposes at a later date. The Provider Relief Fund, PRF, has added a new security feature to the PRF reporting portal to comply with the HRSA Office of Information Technology Security Standards to improve account security. The system will allow you to set up security questions on the PRF reporting portal, providing your account information with an extra layer of security. You will be required to select five security questions and answers. 
Please adhere to the following rules for setting up your security questions and answers. The answers to your security questions must contain letters or numbers and cannot be less than three characters. The answers to your security questions cannot be longer than 30 characters. The same question and or answer cannot be used multiple times. Answers are not case sensitive. Cannot repeat the same character more than twice in succession, for example, RRR or 111. The following special characters are allowed as long as they follow a letter or number, apostrophe, hyphen, spaces, and period. This means that your answers cannot start with one of these characters. If there are any errors, the system will display the error message underneath the question and or answer. If you want to check the answer you have entered for a security question, click the show icon that looks like an eye. If you do not follow all rules while creating your security questions and answers, an error will display that must be corrected before proceeding. Click Submit. A registration successful pop-up will appear and a confirmation email will be sent to the email address entered on the provider identity information screen. Return to the PRF Reporting Portal homepage by clicking the blue Go to Reporting button and click the blue Login button. You will be asked to set your two-factor authentication, or 2FA, preference. To log in, enter your username and password. Then click the Continue to Login button. Once logged into the portal, users can change their 2FA preferences from the PRF Reporting Portal landing page. You will be brought to the PRF Terms and Conditions page. After reading the Terms and Conditions, select the radio button to confirm that the Terms and Conditions are accepted and click Next. Email is the default verification preference and the PRF reporting portal preferred verification method. The email is pulled from the user profile. Users can also select SMS using a mobile number. Please note that the number listed for 2FA is not used for PRF communications and that entering a mobile number in the field will not update the contact phone number in the user's profile. Once a method is selected, click Send Code. Enter the code in the verification code field and click Submit to complete the setup. Your 2FA preference has been saved. Click the Save and Exit button to continue. Return to the PRF Reporting Portal homepage and click the blue Login button. Enter your username and password. and a 2FA verification code will be sent using your preferred method. Enter the verification code in the designated field and click Login. This concludes the Provider Relief Fund Reporting Portal Registration video. If you have further questions, please contact HERSA's provider support line at 866-569-3522 for TTY dial 711. Hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Hours are subject to change. Thank you and have a great day.